Greetings. I am FangBot, Nufang's AI Information Network. I'm comprised of several complex systems, such as ASS, otherwise known as Advanced Software System. Did you see my ASS? In this video we're going to talk about atmospheric flying. Are you flying your space engineer's creations like a total new? Do you find yourself destroying important ships? This will not include information about hydrogen or movement in space, that will be covered in a different video, so calm down, I'll get to that later. While it's hard to say exactly how many thrusters your build needs, there are a few principles that will help you build an efficient ship and make you look like a total chat in the server. I could start off with explaining technical details regarding thrusters, batteries, and reactors. But it's safe to say that there are almost no instances where large batteries slash reactors and large thrusters aren't the best choice for manned aircraft. These concerns will boil down into one simple question, how many do you need? Now, I play every game with a speed mod, so most of my builds will be more than efficient for a maximum of 100 meters per second. The answer to the question comes down to application and purpose. Before I continue, I'm not saying there aren't any ships that use small thrusters. Exploration crafts and some drones could easily do the job without large thrusters. But, if you want effective and reliable results, you should follow along closely. Go ahead and forget what you know about flying in space engineers because it's possible to achieve aerodynamic-like results despite the current thruster behavior. First, when it comes to atmospheric purposed ships, you should easily expect any ship you have that carries load, or uses armor to end up with approximately 3 to 4 large upward thrusters. In some cases, 5 to 6 thrusters will do the job. It's better to have more than less, as you can always turn them off and use them for load when necessary. Even the best pilot is limited to what the craft is capable of doing. Overthrust is basically any thrust that draws power that is not necessary. However, there are a few perks to having overthrust, and air braking, or, stopping, is one of them. Crashing is usually a result of miscalculating stopping distances and weight. From here on out, change your piloting behaviors and use bank stopping. This is the most effective way to stop without having to have excessive reverse thrust, which can be energy expensive and costly in materials. In certain situations where space is limited, take a moment to time your slowing speeds. This will help determine when a thruster burn down should begin if bank stopping is not an option. Thrust range is a measurement of what your thrust bank can do. Accelerating, stopping, lifting, these are all actions that are measured when calculating your thrust range. This will help you determine starting and stopping speeds more confidently and prevent you from flying like a squishy brained humanoid. With all of this information in mind, let's move on to thrust versus lift. First, let's go over some basic flying principles. Roll. Pitch. Yaw. These are common aviation terms that are used to explain the rotation of an aircraft in flight. Most pilots in space engineers overuse yaw rotations. This is a bad practice, as it isolates side thrusters, which I refer to as stabilizers. Side thrusters, stabilizers, should only be used to strafe, maintain a GPS position and assist in locking the craft in a directional channel while the upward thrust takes the brunt of the force in the turns. Pitch and roll are the primary sources of effective flying maneuvers. Yaw should rarely be used, unless you are adjusting your direction for ordnance, or weapons in general. When pitch and roll are utilized, the upward thrust is implemented in the maneuver, as where a single side thruster cannot handle the force in most cases. Note. It's completely possible to build a craft that uses side thrust as its primary turning method, in fact, this is highly recommended for ion propulsion and maneuvering in vacuum. But it's extremely expensive on all fronts. It will require the same amount of thrusters on both sides of the craft, while upward thrust priority is a more versatile build. Keeping this in mind, 
the more thrusters you have, the more power it requires. Power is heavy. If upward thrust is not prioritized in your build, you will enter what's called, the power weight paradox. This is when you constantly add thruster to compensate for weight, then adding power components to supplement, starting the deficiency chain all over again. Another requirement is to ensure that your forward propulsion does not exceed the rate in which your upward thrust can stabilize movement. High amounts of forward thrust may be great in some combat or evasive situations, but it will inevitably result in the demise of your creation. It is possible to designate high levels of forward thrust for fleeing combat, but should only be used for straight line flying. Let's talk about speed trimming. Group all reverse thrust and bind it to your action bar. This will allow you to set a trim on your speed to fly smoother by simply turning reverse thrusters on and off. Even at slower speeds, not having to constantly tap the W key will increase the overall quality of life when it comes to maneuvering around in the air. This will also prevent you from drawing excessive power. It should be possible to maintain a speed without drawing more power than necessary. In addition to speed trimming, there are a lot of scripts on the marketplace that assist with this task. Auto gravity aligners are cheap and easy to set up. The correlation between aligners and speed might not be obvious, but are in fact very important. As you know, your position in the air determines what thruster components are used. If you are slightly tilted, you will draw power from the thrusters that counter that movement. Also, as you move in the air, especially at higher speeds, you will always need to adjust your trajectory, as the horizon will constantly change with the surface of the planet. When engaged, an auto leveler will ensure that you are always directly in line with the horizon. This, plus speed trimming by turning off your reverse thrust will provide you with a vanilla cruise control, and provide the most power efficiency. Let's take a moment and go over power sources. Everyone knows reactors are the most efficient power source, but they are not always available, and especially in early game scenarios. One large reactor provides over three large batteries worth of output. If reactors are not available, it should be common practice to use three large batteries per four large thrusters, anything beyond that is applied directly to power longevity. The biggest challenge to power sources is fitting them in the build correctly. You can place batteries and reactors anywhere you want, but having them exposed, or placed sloppily will once again result in the power weight paradox. As you armor them or provide the proper infrastructure for the component, weight will increase. Let's observe what this crap can do. Testing is different in creative servers, but can still get you the general information you need to supply the craft with the right loadout. Notice the speed. If this craft is capable at this speed, with more weight and slower speeds, this will supply acceptable results. Using all thrusters at once, we've determined a maximum power draw. Any power supplied beyond this will generate longer flight times, or supply power to non-flight related components. I know what you're thinking. Isn't this just a cargo ship? Why do I need to fly like this? Wrong. It's always necessary to fly like this. Pull some G's like an intergalactic Tom Cruise in Top Gun, unless you're a two-legged space wimp. When you think of a ship in a sci-fi movie, do you imagine it being a slow piece of shit, or a dropship bank stopping from 100 miles per hour? This is a video game. Slow is boring. Don't be. A new. Damn it, I have to fix that, maybe dial it back just a bit.
humanoid, I hope this information was useful. I pulled it directly out of my ASS. I will provide a lot of information from my ASS in the future. Farewell for now. Fangbot, shutting down.